The Dr. SK Matek Memorial Hospital has been in existence for almost four decades and has been undergoing significant changes and refurbishment. Formerly known as the Lisedi Clinic, the hospital, which is part of the clinic's health group, was renamed in 2016. The Lisedi Clinic was renamed in honor of an astute contributor to education in Soweto. So what are the plans for the hospital serving the community of Soweto and beyond and what direction? Will we be see it going uh, forward? Hi, Tuke Tabomolokwani. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight, uh, we take a look at uh, Dr. S.K. Mateke Memorial Hospital and seek to understand its mission, purpose, and strategy and service offerings under the leadership of its new CEO, Kubashini Naidu, who joins us in studio this evening. Uh, Ms. Naidu, much appreciated for coming in. Good evening. Welcome to the show. Good evening, Tabo, and thank you so much for this opportunity. Much appreciated. I mean, uh, you know, uh, normally I would get into, uh, you know, uh, the whole uh, works of the hospital and everything that you do. But I, I, I just want to take it back. Maybe let's start from where you started, uh, you know, career-wise, uh, your professional journey. Uh, how did you uh, begin this uh, uh, wonderful path? Awesome. Thank you for the opportunity again. Uh, of course, it began some 30 odd years ago, uh, having uh, applied into, into the healthcare, uh, healthcare faculties. I am a qualified uh, pharmacist by profession. I studied at the University of Durban Westville down in KZN. Um, I then started my career as a pharmacy manager, and that was predominantly in the public sector. Uh, uh, starting off a lot of the antiretroviral facility clinics down in the free state and then moving on into the private sector where I joined an alternate private healthcare company as a pharmacy manager and then promoted up to uh, hospital managers within their, uh, their acute facilities. And of course I've been afforded the opportunity now of joining the clinic's healthcare group and becoming the CEO of our uh, acute facility in uh, Deep Cliff, Soweto. Uh, as Dr. S.K. Matseke Memorial Hospital uh, Hospital Manager. Interesting indeed. I mean, 30 years is a long time, and uh, obviously the experience that comes with that. Um, uh, let's talk about, uh, you know, you joining um, the clinics group. I mean, you are appointed as the CEO there. Have you always wanted to occupy the position? And also, um, you know, how do you feel uh, currently and then also just the strategic direction that you you know you have for the hospital i mean obviously uh, if you are you know when you are appointed as the ceo you must have a vision for the hospital yeah yes so uh, of course i think for me the starting point as a clinics healthcare group brand ambassador it's about the hashtag line which speaks to where health and care meet and that is Dr. S.K. Matsiki Memorial Hospital for me. Uh, the point that, you know, as a community that we serve in Soweto, we look to how do we marry health and how do we marry care in an institution that has actually brought health care to the doorstep. And uh, for me, the visionary outlook beyond and currently for 2024 is how do we execute the current strategy? And the strategy is around how do we have customer intimacy that speci speaks specifically to the community uh, of Soweto, moving on to the doctors and the stakeholders that uh, provide services and ultimately the end user, which would be the employees. Uh, other than um, looking at customer intimacy, we speak to um, operational excellence and how do we offer a high standard of quality in our, in our institutions and at the same time empower the people that provide the service and ultimately what we're looking to achieve is just not executing it's how do we innovate in that space and ultimately transform the current acute facility that could holistically look at how we treat patients from beginning to end. We, we, we're going to get in deep into, okay. in, into that, uh, uh, you know, as the show goes on. But, um, you know, I, I, I also want to understand how do you uh, do it? I mean, uh, it's a male-dominated space, you know, and then the you know, biggest positions, the CEOs, the HODs, uh, director generals, you know, these positions mostly uh, occupied by males. Um, what do you think, um, um, uh, do you think that the current climate has changed? Uh, women are coming in and uh, they are occupying that space. Most definitely. 
most definitely even in the clinics health group as as a whole there are a lot of females that are that are in current uh, high level positions that they do own but i think it takes a lot of juggling on our end as as females to to be afforded the opportunity but i must say that the opportunity exists it does it is there uh, i can say in the healthcare industry uh, across the board within acute facilities as well as in the group when we talk about new business management i definitely can agree that the women have come to the forefront and have been given the afforded the opportunity but with it comes a lot of accountability and responsibility mm. um, i mean with regards to dr sk mateka memorial hospital would you say um you know what would you say is the key difference uh, uh, in your intended approach? I mean, you did highlight that uh, customer intimacy. It's very important. I mean, we're seeing what's happening with the different health facilities. People walk in. It's either they uh, get to emergency wards, and uh, I mean, em emergency. Um, uh, you know, and then they there's no service. Uh, the people end up being there for quite some time before they get assistance. How? Do you intend of uh, you know approaching uh, that and in dealing with it so that uh, the people of Soweto can actually trust the hospital? Sure. So, Tabo, for me, uh, my huge focus for twenty twenty four is what is the value add, and the value add boils down right from the top, which is our business unit, which is the group, all the way down to service delivery on the ground. And currently we are in the, in the process of empowering each individual in terms of upskilling, in terms of education, in terms of competency, so that when we have exactly what you say, a customer that walks in right at the door in terms of security, in terms of their patient journey through the hospital, how I currently measure each interaction during that patient journey and what is that value add that I as Kubashni Naidu bring to Dr. SK. And that value add is measurable. And at the, at the point that we, we are currently, we are trending those customer experiences, uh, their voice, their opinions um, around what we currently deliver. And they are heard on multiple platforms. But it's also an integration, just not at hospital level. Uh, it's within the business, it's within the market, it's within the community. And we're busy with outreach into our schools, our churches, as well as the, the malls that are around us as well. Kubashin and I do. That's my guest tonight. Uh, we're going to take a quick ad break. When we come back, we uh, continue the conversation. That's the CEO of Dr. SK Mateka Memorial Hospital, uh, getting us better acquainted uh, with who she is and uh, you know her rise to the leadership at the hospital. Let's take a quick breather. We're we'll coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tabo Mulukwani. Now, before the ad break, we started the conversation with Dr. SK Memorial, uh, Mateke Memorial Hospital CEO, Kubashni Naidu. She joins us in studio uh, just to talk more about the hospital and some of the strategies that they have uh, as they are bringing services to the people of Soweto and surrounding areas. Uh, Ms. Naidu, much appreciated for staying on. Um, you know, I want to talk about uh, the challenges within the healthcare system. I mean, there's quite a lot. Uh, you look at uh, understaffing, you look at, uh, you know, resources uh, that are not there. And uh, also re hospitals are also struggling also in terms of, uh, you know, um, getting the, ne the necessary financial support that they need. Uh, how difficult is it to run a hospital, especially given these challenges? So of course we're working with external and internal challenges and I think when we think about the economy and we think about the current funding models that are in place from private to, to medical aid funded that impacts us directly and we talk about our primary purpose as uh, Clinics Healthcare Group as part of Dr. SK Matseke Memorial, we want to make it an affordable system. Um, and we do know that in terms of the economy, people have downscaled in terms of yeah. medical aid that they are able to, to afford. But however, we are currently affording those patients or th that clientele an option, which is a cash option. Uh, and whether it's, it's a once-off payment or it's a payment funding that we put into place, it does exist. But amongst the challenges that we do have internally, of course, is the strengthening of the human capital that we have. Yeah. And, and predominant human capital that we have in our facilities is our nursing element. 
and therefore we have currently within our group an agency, our own internal nursing agency. We also have our own nursing clinical training specialists that measure and ensure that our staff are being trained and also making sure that they are available for service when we do. And amongst the, you know, the financial constraints that we do have, at the moment it's about how do we manage those expenses, how do we manage our, our fruitful expenditures that we do have in, in many of our areas, and finding efficiencies to ensure that uh, once we have gained the market share and once we have gotten the loyalty from the community that we serve, we provide a high standard of quality that a patient would prefer us amongst the other service providers. I mean, speaking about loyalty, how are the community, uh, you know, how is the community receiving, uh, you know, the services? I mean, you are based uh, uh, in, 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 here in Soweto. You know, I'm, I'm trying to understand uh, how people are actually, you know, receiving you as a hospital. I mean, there are other hospitals in the area, but, you know, what makes uh, Dr. S. K. Matseke stand out out of all these hospitals? The great thing about Dr. S.K. Matseke uh, in belonging to the Clinics Healthcare Group, it is the flagship facility of the group. Uh, it is our largest facility within the group, uh, having state-of-the-art equipment and of course it is currently a 240 bed acute facility with another opportunity to grow uh, where we could possibly see it growing in the next 6 to 12 months from a 240 up to a 300 bed unit. And, and when we talk about loyalty and offering and service, um, I think for me is having private healthcare at your doorstep and the availability and the positioning of where the current facility is. And then of course, you know, the grand diversity of specialities that we have. And then of course, the new uh, service offerings that used to come in the next to six to 12 months as well. Speaking about the offerings, maybe let's talk about them. Uh, what is it that uh, the hospital is offering? I mean, uh, I will be interested. I know Clinics Group has got quite a lot of clinics around, uh, but as you're saying, this is the biggest facility that you have with, with uh, you know, high tech equipment equipment uh, and specialists also. Um, what is, uh, uh, what are your services okay. as a hospital? All right, so just as an acute entry hospital for all of our facilities, we do cover from, from cradle of course to geriatrics and we, we come in at obstetric and gynecology level, we then move on over to pediatrics, we've got general surgery, we've got neonatologist, uh, plastic surgery. Uh, what sets us apart from the rest of our facilities, of course, is the cardiology, uh, cardiac offering that we have. We have a cardiologist as well as a cardiothoracic surgeon, which is looking at future bypass surgeries that will be conducted at Dr. SK. And what I'm currently focusing on is a, a new product, which is bariatric surgery that we're going to offer at Dr. SK. But it's not limited to that. Of course, we have a complementary services that's amongst our facilities, whether that's in radiology, physiotherapy, renal dialysis care as well. Uh, these are all extended care services that we currently do have at Dr. SK. Uh, you know, I actually wanted to ask you this question a bit later on, but uh, I'm just going to ask it now. Um, the issue of the NHI bill, um, very contentious, you know, contentious issue. And uh, I know that it, it will be subjected to a lot of lawsuits and stuff because a lot of groups are now saying that, look, it cannot go on as it is. Um, what's your take on that? And also the impact that it will have to private health care because we know uh, somewhere, somehow uh, you guys are concerned. So, you know, uh, mirrored to the vision of what uh, Clinics Healthcare set out to achieve almost 40 years ago is bringing healthcare to the underprivileged. And that mirrors exactly what uh, the current government is trying to achieve with national health insurance. So that public-private partnership uh, needs to happen. And it's something that Clinics Health Group is, is definitely uh, on the agenda to achieve and to partner and to make sure that we're able to afford uh, the public sector. Currently we have multiple projects uh, in place where we uh, have committed to and have dedicated our services as a private health care and put in processes to see possibly a new engagement with national health insurance in the future. Actually wanted a bit more but it's fine uh, Ms. Naidu, we, we're going to take a quick break. Sure. When we come back we conclude the conversation. Do stay with us.
Welcome back, you're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We are getting closer to the end of the show, but we still continue the conversation on the Dr. S.K. Matsega Memorial Hospital and the plans it has under its new leadership. That's uh, the appointment of CEO uh, Kobashi Naidu, who joins us in studio this evening. Uh, Ms. Naidu, I mean, there's quite a lot of issues that are happening within the health sector. Um, the issue of unemployed doctors, medical uh, personnel, from nurses to, you know, pharmacists. It's a, it's a very s serious issue. I mean, as a hospital, um, you know, are there programs uh, that you have that, I know that you, obviously you cannot take everyone, but, uh, you know, are there programs in place that you will be able, you know, to assist these doctors? Because, you know, when you get into this profession, automatically you assume that uh, look um, it's, it's it's a skill that is needed uh, it will be able, I will be able to help uh, my community uh, you know bridge the gap of what's happening within the health sector and stuff but we are seeing doctors are out in the cold uh, you know or medical professionals are out in the cold what do you think is 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 going is, is going wrong and also what needs to be done to address this from your own perspective as a group so I definitely think within the private health sector, the recruitment and selection process is very vigilant. It exists. The need is there. Uh, it's one of our strategic pillars in terms of custom intimacy. How do we, how do we, of course, recruit them and retain them at the same time? So of course, um, the opportunity exists. We currently have a recruitment program in place at the facility where we look at the different disciplines, we look at the need within the community and we then go uh, you know, in search of these medical practitioners that are available that have the level of um, qualifications that we require and then we go through a robust recruitment process to then recruit those doctors into our facility because these are the needs of what the community currently needs at Soweto. So it does exist and then of course with the, with the nursing specific you know, um, lack of nursing that we have, not just in the public or in the private sector, uh, our doors are most definitely open. And uh, we do have a recruitment drive in place. And at our, you know, our facilities, we're looking to achieve and retain these nurses because they are the forefront of our healthcare service delivery. So the system does exist. Uh, we, we, of course, go to, to, to the community, we go out to the people, and we do discuss uh, our needs and uh, what we have available for recruitment. Mm. I mean, uh, speaking about recruitment also, how do you make sure that, uh, you know, your staff uh, is towing the line? I mean, obviously it's, you know, some medical professionals, you know, nurses, doctors, whoever that's in there, even other employees that uh, do not form, form part of the uh, setup of, 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 of the healthcare system in its entirety. But we're talking about maybe cleaners and other people. Some people would go rogue, uh, you know, now and again. How do you deal with that? And also, are there any programs that you have as a hospital to, you know, um, um, uh, enhance the skills of uh, your employees? So of course there's a learnership and development division that exists within our facilities and within the business and there are of course programs and a clear strategic direction on how we empower these, these uh, individuals. But above and beyond that, we have performance management tools in place where we have sit down quarterly performance reviews based on key performance indicators and targets that we drive as an organization. And when we speak about the healthcare professionals, of course, they work within a legislative body and whether it's the South African Nursing Council, the, the Medical Council, all of them have to be accredited with all of these bodies. Uh, you know, we also do an annual recon to make sure that they are registered and all of their ethical professional uh, behaviors in terms of clinical outcomes are also measured on an annual basis. And in, uh, in terms of uh, review processes, like I say, within uh, an annual process, we have biannual uh, performance reviews in which we do measure performance and outcomes. And based on these outcomes, they, these head of departments then manage those behaviors so that we can achieve the key performance outcomes that we require in an acute facility. Mm. 
Um, no, I, I mean, we, we are running out of time, but, uh, you know, this question is very important. The importance of, uh, I mean, we touched on it when we spoke about the NHI bill, the importance of, uh, you know, the private sector partnering with government. How important is that uh, in order to make sure that there's equal access to health care? So I think for me, uh, you know, being in Dr. S.K. Matseki Memorial Hospital, being an acute facility and understanding that there is a role play of each role player in, in the entire picture. When we speak about the general practitioners and we talk about primary health care, we then talk about how do we up refer it into, to an acute facility. But at the end of the day, are we accommodating for those that cannot afford basic care? And uh, with an academic facility, 500 meters from Dr. SK. My vision is one day for us to be a, an amalgamated system that is able to support and coexist in the public and the private sector. Just lastly, before I let you go, uh, Mr. Naidu, I mean, we are in the middle of the Health Awareness Month, um, you know, uh, recently celebrated World, World Health Day, uh, as it was recognized in the first week of, of, of this month under the theme, My Health, My Right. And then, I mean, your theme as clinics, it says you are family. Um, you know, how important is, uh, you know, uh, celebrating um, uh, the, this day or this month uh, you know, given the current challenges that, uh, you know, the healthcare system is facing, not only in South Africa, but across, uh, you know, the continent and uh, in, in other various countries in Europe, Asia and in the US. So, of course, for me, I, I think we wouldn't be, I wouldn't be here today if, if I hadn't understood that we are here actually to serve. And for me, uh, it's very specific. I am in the acute industry currently, and with health being a priority and the unaffordability of, of health care, for me, I think the take home today would be, are we responsible and accountable as human beings ourselves? And are the health care providers providing a standard of quality that will give us longevity and quality of life at the end? Just lastly, where can people go? I know that uh, the hospital is, 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 is in deep proof. Yes. Um, maybe if you can give them the specifics, uh, where should they go um, uh, in terms of the directions and stuff? So you, uh, in terms of where we would find me? Yeah. Uh, okay, so you would find me on the corner of Chris Honey and Imanik Road. Um, it would be a lovely opportunity for you to, to meet our facility and our offerings. Uh, me, myself, you will find my door open at any time for your conversation and discussion of how we can improve our offering and services at any time. But you would find me definitely at the corner of Emnik and Chris Hani in Deep Cliff in Soweto. I look forward to adding value and quality to your life. Kubashini Naidu, CEO of Dr. SK Mateke Memorial Hospital. Much appreciated for coming in this evening. I hope that people will come to your hospital and uh, if they have uh, certain issues they'll definitely come to your office and uh, raise them as you're saying that look they're welcome anytime to come and voice their concerns much appreciated for coming in thank you tabo for this opportunity much appreciated that was uh, kubashini and the ceo of dr sk mateke memorial hospital sharing her plans for the hospital with us uh, as well as her general thoughts on health and healthcare in the country that's how we wrap up uh, today's episode of soweto today remember we love hearing from you so please feel free to engage with us and share your thoughts uh, send us an email it's uh, so soweto tv rather soweto today at soweto tv.co.za or you can call us at 081-531-8857 bye to nakita bomelokwani and the rest of the team it's good night from us and thank you for watching but stay tuned for the latest news updates with mas chabakobola coming up next. Bye-bye.